Welcome to this week's Swarfer and Chips. Coming up in today's show, we visit three manufacturing companies and some big names, as well as discussing some fascinating topics. The companies in question were at AM Hydraulics, Rotec Engineering and FT Gearing. We've also an unmissable special offer from Romy, but the offer ends today, so you need to be quick if you want to capitalise on it. Of course, contact Romy directly. Today's show also sees Mark provide an event preview from TW Ward, and we end the show with a technology feature that has the manufacturing world all questioning whether this is going to change the landscape of manufacturing. Find out more at the end of the show as we visit HK3D. So, the football a couple of weeks ago, are you still aching? Very much so. Yeah, very much so, yeah, but I had a call, would you believe, from Gareth Southgate. Incredible. Oh yeah, yeah oh yeah, you had a call. What did he say? <laughs> he wants me on the squad, like the firing squad. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Gio, that is terrible. It's that a shame terrible. you lost, actually. It's you so looked really good at the beginning. It, it, it was very close, a really close fought game, and actually I think we were definitely the better team, weren't we? Just oh, obviously, just, yeah. It's just Chris missed that penalty. Oh, oh, don't mention that. Don't, don't, don't sure. mention that. Well, we've had a uh, mention request um, on Swarf and Chips TV from Robert, Robin Chisnell from Shropshire Engineering or Shropshire Precision, written, we love the show at Shropshire Precision and have recently invested in Tungaloy tooling because of your digital content. So thank you very much, Robin. That's really good. It's really good. And if you've purchased something as a result of seeing it on MTV, don't hesitate to do the same as what Robin's done. Yeah, please do. We're now coming up to our 100th episode. Dun, dun, dun. What's planned? <laughs> Can't say too much, but it's going to be a massive show. Loads of giveaways. Uh, and there'll be trailers coming out very soon. So, first up today, over to Mark in Redditch, who is investigating what's going to be at the show at TW Ward's Open House, which is just around the corner. Today I'm here in Redditch, the Ward CNC Midlands and South showroom. I'm here with Stuart. Now, these guys have got a forthcoming open house on the 9th and 10th of October. Stuart, what makes your open house a little bit different? Okay, there'll be a selection of machines from all our principals, Hyundai Wea, Hartford, Takisawa and Axile. Most of the machines will be cutting, all the machines will be under power. We'll have a uh, selection of uh, selected partners for Redditch Revealed, um, from metrology, uh, work holding, cutting tools. So it's going to be a very interesting event for us. It's going to really put us on the map. At the same time, there's several other events in the locality. Um, so hopefully people that come along will be able to see more than one thing and doors are open, we're, we're ready. Is this the first open house you've had in Redditch? It's the first one in recent years, probably over five years since the last one, certainly since we've got the, the new structure in place and so yeah it really is the first of what's going to be a series of events going forward. And looking at the machines that uh, we're looking at here, some of them will be at the open house, I know you've got others coming in. but do you, do you have quite a big range for, for lots of different applications? We do. We've got the, the five axis, the multi axis, we've got um, two axis lathes, we've got vertical lathes, we've got some very rigid, reliable vertical machining centres. So there's a real selection. Anything that any of our potential customers and existing users within the locality, and it isn't just the Midlands, it's right down to the south, it's um, up to just south of Sheffield that the region covers. So whatever our customers use, and also we've got the full range that's available in Sheffield, uh, the bigger, heavier machines that we stock in Sheffield. Fantastic. Well, save the date, 9th to 10th of October, Ward CNC Open House. So why would you encourage someone to leave their offices, leave their engineering workshop and go to that open house? I, well, I think the first thing is, as, as, as Stuart was saying there, the, the range of the machines, it's very mm. diverse. You, you can see the VTLs, you can see the, the, the horizontal turning centres, the big Hartford chunky VMCs. But not only that, the point I would make is this is uh, on at the same time as the Seco uh, Inspiration Through Innovation mm -hmm. event. So, and they're t geographically, they're, they're located within sort of 10 miles of each other. Mm -hmm. So it's great, you know, it can work both ways. If you go into Seco, you can go to TW Ward, yeah. or if you go to TW Ward, you can go to Seco as well. So you can really, uh, you know, you can have a good day out. Yeah, good day out. 
TW yeah. have got a great offering now, haven't they? From very small machines to very large machines, you know, they cover the whole spectrum. And, and I think now strategically they're placed in the Midlands and up north. So for people to get to them, you know, it's quite easy. And um, yeah, I think you should definitely go along and see what they have to offer. 9th and 10th of October. Yeah, so it's still to come an unmissable offer from Romy, a factory walkthrough at one of the UK's most progressive manufacturers, Rotec Engineering. Paul tries to find out the differences here between wire cutting and CNC machining and that incredible innovation from HK3D. But before that, it's over to Colin for this week's Cycle Time Challenge. But I want to announce the winners of the previous episode. So episode 92 was guess Colin's age. My guess was 72. Um, well, Adam on YouTube, you got it correct. So well done to you. Please do contact us for your Swarf and Chips goodie bag. Most of the guesses were well up in the 60s though, weren't they? Oh yeah. And above. And, and above. above. Yeah, and above. Um, episode 93, Paleton Engineering, that was yours, Paul. Uh, the correct answer was 25 minutes for that part. And the winner was Marky Mark who guessed 16 minutes. So again, do get in touch with well us. Done. Yep, well done. Over to you, Colin. Ladies and gents, so that is not Lindsay, Mark, Paul, Joe, Geo. In view of recent comments you've been making in the studio about me, not happy. Anyway, moving on. CTC, Cycle Time Challenge, not Colin the Cat if you've watched the football. Right, again, moving on quickly. FT Gearing in order shop. 10 Citizen Machines, absolutely love them. They've recently bought this L20 Type 10 with LFB, low frequency vibration. What does that mean? You're going to turn this. Swarf straight bird's nest into this. Nice chips, it's a fantastic system. We're gonna look at a cycle time challenge, but I wanna talk through this part first. Now this, your life could depend on it because it's part of the slowing down system on an airplane. Not very technical when I'm saying that, but concentricity, five microns. And if you look through there, you know I like, like the shot through there, peeping through between centers, five microns all day, every day. So when you're thinking sliding ahead, you're thinking five, 10, 20,000 off. That's not why FT Gearing have got these sliders. They've got them because they want the accuracy all day long. So they're doing 20 off, 500 off, things like that. But again, really, really accurate. But cycle time challenge, not calling the cat. I want to talk about this small part here. Chris, you have to focus in on that. Now, again, this part could well, your life could well depend on it. It's part of a fuel system for an airplane. So it's part of an assembly with gear, gears and, and splines, etc. Now you've got chamfering, milling, cross hole, through hole. Now, if I could just jiggle that around a bit. The through hole, sorry, Chris, I know not, not great there, but two mil, half mil thickness, five micron tolerances there, all day, every day. Now, what I want to know is, with this new LFE machine, all the other machines were making it really, really well, but because of the accuracy, so they had to clear this wall four or five times an hour at least, so that's obviously slowing the process down. They can make 25 an hour. Now, LFB, as we know, really, really great facility stroke system. How many are they making per hour with that now? Anyway, back to you, ladies and gents in the studio. He's horrible, isn't he? He's <laughs> oh, horrible. He's cheeky. <laughs> Relentless. <laughs> yes. Uh, go on then, guesses. Well, well, well I, I like the way that this, um, with the LFV and the HFT software mm. uh, that Star supplies, whether that it, it, it's hassle free machining, isn't it? It's hassle free, and that's really what you're after. Um, these days, you don't want to be going into the machine and having to sort swarf out. No. If, if you can really just let the machine go, um, and, and what I like about this, I'll come to my guess, is that actually looks like Colin's hair. <laughs> <laughs> that is his hair, isn't it? <laughs> yes. But, 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 but I would say they probably doubled it. I would say they're probably making fifty. Mm. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll probably be around, you know, forty. Mm. I think there's a significant increase, definitely. And so I like what are your seconds? What's your cycle time challenge guess? Ah, well, obviously you weren't listening because what he was actually saying was how, how, many, how many an extra hour can you, yeah, extra? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay, yeah. that's quite good for everyone. Yeah. So how many so it's extra different. an hour? I, I like the angle, and that's why I yeah. think they've doubled it. I would say they were making 25, so I think it would be about 50. I would 50. Say. I'm saying about 40. Right. Which okay. is a hell of an improvement. Yes. I, if we're right, you know, yeah. we might be wrong. Okay, well, those are your guesses. That's fine. I'd like to also make another point is that he's illustrating here small parts, larger parts on a sliding head machine and the accuracy and repeatability you know it, it, they they are very versatile machines mm. um, and with the LFV as well you know when you're doing the long shaft work that's where you do get the stringy swarf mm. it's not a problem anymore you know but you, why hasn't this been developed for fixed head machines it's a really good point you know uh, mm -hmm. it's very uh, dominant in the sliding head market at the moment now but w why you know people with fixed head machines are still doing pr production yeah. um, so why can't this be applied to that possibly Absolutely, something yeah. for the future 
Right, okay, so not only some deals coming up and to be had at TW Ward's open house, but if you can't wait, then how about this one from Romy? We've just travelled back from A&B where we saw the launch of the new D-Series Vertical Machining Centre from Romy. However, there's still plenty of the old series in stock here at Romy. So why don't you get in touch and find out the price? Additionally, as you can see behind, they've got GLAs and C-Series lathes all available X-Stock at a wonderful price. Get in touch to find out what that deal is. As I say, X-Stock, so get in touch. It's worth getting involved with this, isn't it? But is someone going to instantly have a requirement for one of these machines or is this just the time if they're planning just to go, right, OK, let's consider Romy now? I, I think it's a, it's a case of um, if you're in the market for a machine and you're looking around the market and this kind of drops in your inbox or you see this here on mm. Swarf and Chips, then why wouldn't you go, actually? Yeah. Double, double dis is it double digit discount they were saying? It is double digit mm. discount wow. and Romy's share of the marketplace is increasing significantly year in and year out and I think that for current Romy users that have got Romy machines already especially if they're thinking of buying their second or their third one they yes. seem to be repeated this is the time to buy because double digit Discount. Perfect opportunity to make the most of it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And, and I think, but I think you're right. You don't just buy a machine for the sake of it. You, <laughs> you have don't. to have a need. Mm. Um, so it's it's a case of if you've got a need, if you're looking for a machine, but it's it does end 22nd of September, which is tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, tomorrow. And one, one last point. I mean, the fact that people are buying one, then a second and third, it really illustrates what great machines that they yeah. are. Brilliant. Okay. So next up, back to Colin again. Oh, I'm really sick of him already. So, um, to one of his trademark walks through this time at Rotec Engineering. Colin, over to you. Right, guys and Lindsay, what can I say? First of all, your comments last week about my syrup. It's not a syrup, but a bit of a windy day. It's going everywhere, but it's staying still. So, shut up. Anyway, we're at Rotec Engineering. I think we need to do a swarf of chips on this because it is a fantastic machine shop. Let's go inside and have a quick run through, shall we? Right. In full training for football, keep that going, and it's got to be fast because we only have two minutes. Anyway, DNG Mori NLX 2500-700, fixed head machine, bar feed. It's a beast of a machine. Just look at that turret there, and it's got the built-in motor, the actual tooling, 10,000 RPM. Basically, it'll be take big chunks out of components. So it's exactly what they want. Fast, accurate, reliable. Here's something they made earlier. Look at that for a component. So drilled, milled, fantastic. Now we are on a speedy run. And again, keep my fitness levels up. But Rotec, as I said, engineering Nirvana, 24 7 lights out running. They're going that way. They've got this robotic cell here with a halter robot making components on their DMG Mori DMU50 full five axis machine. Ollie is a miller, loves it, really does love it. It'll do all sorts of things. Great example here. And he was very blase about this. Something he just knocked up earlier. Nice little component there. That was just a little bit of practice for him. Made simple on this machine. And another component here, it's a great example. Okay, it's not too intricate, but with a robot arm, they can run those out 24 7 again, engineering Nirvana. Now, come on, come on, Chris, keep up. I'm running. Chris is dawdling as usual. Nakamura here. Now, this is the NTRX 300 fixed head lathe with bar feed, if I'm correct. It absolutely is. But as you can see it, perfect timing there, running away. The beauty of this machine, full five axis. So, fixed heads driven tooling, correct me if I'm wrong on the driven tooling, the full five axis, great example of what they're making on here, look at that, oh, so turn, threaded, milled, beautiful, nice example there, come on Chris now, we're going to have a quick run through the shop, 25 machines I'm reliably informed, so as I said, Nakamura's there, we've got the Doosan's there, that's the Puma, Chiron's here, Eco Mills, another Chiron, what, what can we say, and so that's your milling, your fixed head turning, Come on, Chris, keep up, speedy. Come on. Both of you have to play football, mate. You're never going to make the team if you're this slow. Anyway, sliding head work here. As you can see, I think they like their stars. This is our latest acquisition. This is the star, let me get this right, SR20 Type J with HFT. HFT, as we all know, high frequency turning, basically stopping your birds nesting. All got three metre bar feet. So essentially, again, getting our 24 7 lights out running. Great example of what they manufacture. Look at that, nice little component there. So they'll turn that part and this nut, they make the holding pin just in there, if you could see that. But then they put a little bend in it, as you can see, and they manufacture tools for that themselves. So that's Rotec Engineering, 
great example of vision, automation, back to the studio. My question there is, what is an engineering nirvana? I mean... <laughs> it, it's, it's brilliant, isn't it? At 10 seconds, I hope that they can slow it down uh, and put it over the top. I think he actually, when he's talking about his hair, he, he says it's, it's stainless steel. So that's what <laughs> and I think he, he needs LFB in his hair. <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of all that bird's nest. <laughs> My hairdresser's got some uh, low-frequency clippers that <laughs> oh. work quite well. <laughs> Rotec Engineering, a massive company, but they're also with the network mtd's network with colin so if you want any parts made please do contact colin the cat on the mtd if you want network. him walking around your machine shop <laughs> yes do contact please he's, do he's, he's even doing uh, good deals on his syrup <laughs> as well. but, but in a serious point some of these components these guys make are fantastic mm -hmm. and i think that's the i think that's the i think that's the great thing about companies like this they show the investment in the automation and the machinery mm -hmm and what they can produce as a result of that. And um, every engineer wants to be making components like these guys. And it's the variety pool mm. here. I think they're really capable of doing a lot. So like we say, encourage you to contact. Yeah, I think it, again, it, when you touch on investment, we touched on it a few weeks mm -hmm. back, didn't we, Lindsay? And, 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 and it's a real emphasis really that you know if, if, if you don't invest you, you effectively you're moving backwards you're yeah. staying still you're moving backwards and this is a real great example of you know invest and, and, and the success that you get from that. Mm. Talking of success Paul you went to AM Hydraulics or Tooling? Well it's a division of uh, AM Hydraulics but yeah AM Tooling set up uh, literally uh, about nine months ago. Okay. So in this brief piece today, I'm here at AM Tooling. What I'm trying to do is uh, talk with Dan here and, and, and find out how easy it is to learn different disciplines of engineering. Uh, the company here was founded very much uh, AM Hydraulics on their manufacturing of hydraulic parts and large components, but CNC milling and CNC turning rather than wire cut machining, which is what they're doing now. Um, Dan, just give us a very quick uh, overview in your opinion of how easy it is to get to grips with wire cutting when you've not done it before and how you can begin to think differently about manufacturing um, with solutions like this from Fanuc. So previously I had no experience. I worked alongside an operator that actually ran the wire. I did fairly small amounts of work alongside him but I was employed here, I was sent on the training course and um, I went on, the, on a week's training course and then after that I was basically thrown in the deep end. But with the support of Fanuc, I went on to uh, uh, work alongside them, them guys using their um, factory and those, their machines while we were waiting for our machine to be installed and I had the support from their tech guys if I had any queries and any problems. But can you look back now and see how you used to maybe make parts on a milling machine when they, you could have been more effective and more efficient um, by using a wire cut such as this robo cut? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, we've, we're making components for an uh, aerospace project at the moment where we're nesting components, machining only um, a fraction, say a couple of mil down on the surface, where we're actually going to um, uh, nest them, where they're actually going to be nested together and then actually profiled out using the wire overnight. We come in, we can then just snap off the components and they're complete components and it's just free labour, isn't it? So, so, so you freed up your, your milling, um, yeah. your milling cell, and you're now doing the. Bit. Now, is it mainly because you're doing it unmanned? Is that the advantage, or is it an advantage to the speed of the, the cutting, to the to the uh, the finished part, the accuracy, the surface finish? The unmanned is definitely an improvement, but it's 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 the actual the holding of the component. It's uh, it's going to be it's going to end up as a two mil uh, component with a, a one mil step. And be able to hold that component on the milling would just it would just cause its own complications. So nesting them together allows us to machine them all in one, keeping the rigidity, and then we then slice them out using a start hole and then leaving tags so we can snap off those tags. So is it fair to say you'll think very differently now about when you get an application, when you get a drawing, about whether you can utilise unmanned running on this wire cut machine from Fanuc as opposed to doing it in your other cells? Oh yes, def definitely. Yeah, I always when out it just helps. You know, once you've got an wire machine you do approach the actual machining of that component completely differently thank you very much Dan I think that's really the story here it's about we always talk about thinking outside the box how can you be more efficient in your machine shop and certainly undermanned running on machines like this from Fanuc this RoboCut machine uh, could give you the ability to make your components as accurately with as good a surface finish uh, but far quicker than you may have done by using other machining disciplines so what's the reservation for so many people? Obviously it's got its different applications, so why are people quite reserved as opposed to buying 
Mm. Great, no great interview that though, wasn't it? It was a good interview. I don't think that there's a reservation. Um, mm. I think that it's more of a, an education. Yeah. Um, I, I think that it's, it's application specific. I think that for certain operations, um, this would lend itself more than a milling machine. You know, okay. for an example, if you had a, a very complex part with two-way uh, two-way compound angle, where it's it's quite difficult to present to the to the spindle to get the depth, you haven't got no problem with this kind oh, of. Sorry, or, Gio, but would someone then invest in a machine if it's only that one application? They need to no. have enough work. Yeah, that, absolutely. So, where, so then, are they searching for a new area of work? I, I think the thing is with the the EDM side, the, the market is definitely less limited than your metal cutting, you know, machining centre and, and that area. And I always think that the businesses like Fanuc and others are trying to develop their machines to be able to do, um, you know, more and more all the time, uh, and, and potentially save you from having to put it onto a machining centre doing some of those those potential jobs on actually on on the wire cut machine but they're, they're far more advanced they're, they're very reliable they're highly accurate good surface finishes now as well uh, the, the auto wire feed on the machine so you can leave them running overnight and it's unmanned running um, but like geo says he'd know more than me about applications because he's used one i think well kind of profiling if you're doing lots of profiles if you, you could do them out of one solid billet for you, or sheet if you like, mm -hmm. rather than having to have lots of little billets and, and profile each one individually. individually. So again, it, it, it's, it's trying, trying to, to make, find, find a part that lends itself to it. What I was trying to get out of this interview is people that are doing um, these processes on other machines, would they be better off maybe with a, with a wire cut machine to do something? Yes. Like I think you've got to start with a component. You've got to look at a component from when you get the drawing and say, right, what is the best way to make this component? Is it best on a CNC? Is it best on a wire cutting machine? Mm. Because, you know, one would be better than another dependent on the, yeah. the application. And and that, we, yeah. it, it needs to be, you know, it needs to be thought about really. Yeah. So then you have to promote yourself as then having that EDM as one of your capabilities. So last from us today, 3D printing, additive manufacturing of metals. Previously before it was only a vision which was expensive, slow and often not cost effective. Well now that's all changed thanks to Mark Forged. Lindsay we're here today at HK. Now we've got the launch of the new Metal X product range. Now, Dan, there's a lot of 3D printers out there. Uh, additive manufacturing is, is, is on the tip of everyone's tongue. But what is so different about this particular product that you're launching today? Okay, it's a complete shift away from where we've come. Expensive machinery, health and safety issues, um, the support generation software, everything's very complex. We're creating barriers to entry so people can't adopt it. This new machine, the Metal X, it's £110,000 for the machine, the furnace, the whole debinding turnkey solution. Parts are much easier to print. It's like green button operation. You import it into a cloud-based bit of software. It works the support out for you. You send it to the printer, press go. A day, two days later for the full process, and you've got a solid metal part. Now, metal parts, how many different types of mater metal materials can you print, and how long does it take to change from one material to another? Okay, well, it's a great question. Material changes in our old technology, two to three days. This, five to ten minutes. So we're launching with 17.4 pH stainless steel. There'll be a 316. We've got two tool steels, Inconel 625, grade 5 titanium, copper. The, the list goes on. They, they, they will be expanding and there is a roadmap for release. So how, is, how have you achieved this time saving? You know, what, what kind of technology has is, is, is enabled you to do this? So it's a fusion of two technologies in all honesty. FDM, a well tried and tested 3D printing technology and MIM, metal injection moulding. So we're printing basically a, a powdered metal that's infused with wax and plastic in a filament, extruded in the traditional sense, then we put it in a debinder uh, and, and into a furnace to, to solidify and get our dense metal part. Now I want to touch on like real life applications and, and printed parts. Now I've, I've picked a particular part that cannot be machined on a CNC machine. Is this, is this the kind of applications and the kind of parts that you'd be looking to manufacture? 100% yeah. A an assembly that this was an assembly made of a number of parts. We've redesigned it slightly so elements such as the holes are self-supporting but now uh, you've essentially freed up CNC machines, doing it in one process, removing inspection and assembly points. It, it's, it's taken days off production times. And this is, is this also going to enable engineers to really re-engineer components as we knew them? Because 
we can now effectively manufacture components that we couldn't manufacture in the past. Yeah, 100%. Lightweighting is going to be a massive element to this. Inside this, we can shell it out and put a, a, an infill structure and then enclose it, which we just couldn't do with any other technology. No metal technology could completely enclose a honeycomb structure as this can. Dan, thank you very much for the informative interview. Now, Lindsay, it's back to you in the studio. If anyone has any reservations, yes, we're going to talk about this video, but if anyone has any reservations, I wouldn't hesitate to go and see Darren because, of course, a lot of us will be thinking and have reservations. It's new technology, but he's so confident. He knows the product. Knowledgeable and enthusiastic, mm. yes. I think. Yeah, it really mm. ca came out. and. £110,000. I mean, you, you, you've a question for you, Gio, is... To, to me on this, I, I was at the event, but I didn't get as much time as yourself to explore the technology. But what about the integrity of the parts? That, yeah. that, that sort of, you know, do you put them on an aircraft? Is there any testing procedures? That is a really, that is a really good you know. question. Mm. Before we move on to that, I, I'd, I'd just like to say that, you know, I, was a, I had reservations about 3D printing and, and, and 3D printing of, of metal parts. And, and it's de definitely changed my perspective. You know, I thought that it'd be such a long time before it could get rid of CNC machines, but it, it, you know, the, the way technology is moving is just incredible. In regards to the composites, uh, that is probably my only question that I'd like answered actually. You know, when you, you, you're building up a, a metal component and you've got a, a mixture of composites coming, powders, in, coming yeah. in, if for example the first one was proven, it, if for example uh, that the process was to change or there was a, a fault with the product and the the material changed how would you be able to check that i don't know mm. i don't know the integrity i think would be sound but the material uh, that the actual material could that ever change how would it stay remain the same mm. every single time One hundred ten thousand pounds though incredible it's it, it's now puntable Yes. Crazy, crazy mm, yeah. uh, statement to make, but it's you can have a go. Um, yeah, it's not going to replace all CNC machining, but if you're looking at making parts faster, uh, change over from metals, stainlesses to titaniums, and all that very, very quickly, it, it is breakthrough. Technology. Oh, definitely. We did a Swarf and Chips with Mark Forge before, so I do recommend you watch that because it's from the guy himself talking about it and maybe answering a couple of those questions. No, definitely. Too. I think let me one more point is that you know we always assume that 3D printing is for R and D for prototypes. And it still is. It's still it's still got its place for that. Yeah. Definitely, hundred percent. But you know, to redesign um, a component from absolute scratch, to, to rethink of how to design something to make it better, more efficient, more cost effective. Mm -hmm. You know, to to you know, not over engineer a component that previously has been over engineered. This could be a fantastic it's solution. Transforming for the industry. I think it's definitely the future. Hundred yeah. percent. Definitely. Could print a wig for Colin. <laughs> Talking of Colin, he did the Cycle Time Challenge, so please do send your guesses in the comments box below to win the Swarf and Chips goodie bag. Now next week the show comes from one of Europe's best machine tool exhibitions, it's called AMB, and we are only a few episodes away from our 100th show. Yes, can you believe it? But something very special is lined up, but our lips are sealed. Now, thanks for watching the show. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to watch any previous episodes, click on the links here. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning.